It's a real pleasure to to welcome Van and Bondi from Catfish in the Bottom into the show. I feel like you've been on this journey with us since we started Virgin because your records have been, you know, part of our playlist from the very, very start, which has been wonderful. But you guys are on such an exciting journey um, with the release of the second album, The Ride. I mean, just reflecting on the summer so far, what's it been like for you guys? Uh, well, th- since the album's come out, it's allowed everything to just get comp- like much more widescreen. You know, the shows have all moved to outdoors, or they, like we've not got roofs on the buildings we're playing anymore. <laughs> so, like, um, danger being in Britain with that happening. <laughs> I know, we, we've had, we've had, we did one in Castlefield and one in Bristol already. Doing one in Newcastle in a few days. Yeah, and they've all been to feel a bit more like real events than yeah. just a normal gig. We've been lucky enough to like do a couple of gigs where we can curate the rest of the day and pick our favourite bands That's to have great. on, which is the best possible scenario. Yeah, we've been making like kind of mini festivals and then like f- making it a whole night, opening the gates early. It's been great. So it's the, everything around this album's just kind of m- made it excel much. Quicker. Yeah, right? quicker yeah. and bigger. Like then. It was quite odd when we first brought it out though because the album dropped around I think it's the 27th of May or something and then we were on a plane to New York the next day Yeah. so we sort of totally missed any hype or buzz yeah. that might have been around it in the UK and yeah. then came back five weeks later and when it was sort of like dying down a bit we're like oh well <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't really know what it was like but. well we came um, Matt in fact who does the afternoon show here and myself we came down to see you guys just not long after we launched at the Electric Ballroom yeah. show um, and uh, there was a few things from that night that are, that are really to go away with one is kind of your your fans are are so um, what's the word I want to use? They're attentive. Uh, they're so part. They feel like it's almost like an extension of the band in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of what it almost feels like when you're coming in as as someone who's maybe seeing you for the first time and stuff. Yeah. And it seems like it's a fan base that have been with you from the start. Well, yeah. They, there's a lot of people I, I I still see in the crowd who I've seen in the crowd when we first started playing and yeah. back back way back when before we decided in the first album we would be saying we'd, we'd come off stage and ask people in the crowd what they wanted to hear you know what songs they wanted to be on the record and stuff like that so it's always been kind of a close um what's the word like a relationship with it yeah all because it's the whether it with the exact same band as we were when we started when we were, we just wanted to play live all the time that was what it was always about so i think the live show thing the response to the live show is because when people see you buzzing off playing yeah they buzz off watching it so mm. I think you can see that in us completely we're not uh, not that much of a studio like release loads of yeah 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 uh, I mean what's the word like um, when you go to the studio a lot and you kind of love just kind of releasing the music like yeah. we, we prefer to just You're get live that band. Done and, yeah get on the road again so it's like one of the benefits of like doing it the sort of traditional way of moving up you know vent, like 50 capacity venues to 100 to 200 yeah. or whatever the fans really feel invested in it and like you say, it's nice seeing faces in the front row that <laughs> you've seen for however many years. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Have you, I mean, watching you as a front man as well, Van, in terms of you own it up there, you know, Thank you. If, is it, is it, is it something that's, that was instant for you and is, is a really easy thing to be, to be a front man? Uh, to like to, when I'm walking, I'm most comfortable on stage more than, yeah. like, I prefer that. <laughs> I, it's harder for me to sleep than it is to go on stage. You know what I mean? Like I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, all, I'm full of energy all the time, always full of life and, yeah, and the re- the reason why I kind of love music was the I I love the lyrics and the uh, seeing everybody go go nuts singing yeah. them. So it was always about that kind of um, you know when when the singer of the band would say jump and you should just with the mates <laughs> going how high you know what I mean I love <laughs> yeah. all that. So um, yeah, definitely I I it's always what I wanted to be. It's I always just wanted to be the singer. I didn't even I don't really like playing guitar much. Like Bondi's the one who knows guitars and plays guitars and like. Has you feel like restricted a, with your guitar? Th- well, I just, I just, I feel like I don't really. I feel like I'm blagging a living on the guitar compared to what he has to do. He's, got, <laughs> he's tap dancing like twenty pedals, you know, playing all that, these kind of that's riffs. That's how I feel comfortable doing this sort of Michael Flatley on the pedals, but yeah. just head down at all times. <laughs> like I know there's an audience there, but I'm just looking. <laughs> do you get nervous though when you look at the size of the crowds now that you are you are kind of pulling in? You know, from you know Electric Ballroom, still a big venue, but then yeah. I saw you at Tea in the Park, and you've got these massive shows. You know, towards the end of the year as well. Yeah. Uh, are you? Uh, is it kind of? You know, is it? Is it? Is it daunting? Is it exciting? What's? What's the? Are you just kind of bring it on type I think thing? The sort of consensus is that we just the bigger the crowd or the more excited the crowd are, the more hilarious we find it. Yeah. It's just sort of like 
like disbelief meets just hilarity. It just as soon as you catch like somebody else in the band's eye on stage, it's yeah. just sort of fall about laughing. Like, have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> we we still I think we very we still sit much uh, very much on the outside of it. You know, like almost like fans still like we're yeah. still m- massive music fans. We, me and like me and Bondi went to see the Killers in New York a couple of weeks ago because oh, we wow. played. Uh, you know, Governor's Ball Festival. Yeah. My favourite festival in the world. And we got wow, to play you played that, that did you? That's class. phenomenal. And um, me and him were on the, like, the side stage balcony on our knees, arms out, like <laughs> screaming every word. Like in between songs, the band like looking up onto the balcony. Like, what are they doing up there? Security, <laughs> security. Yeah. So I think it's just like it's all, it, when the crowds are getting bigger and everything's getting bigger, we just kind of sit back and just find it hilarious that, that this is this is going on based around these records or like just what, you know, what we're performing live. Yeah. So it's a... Uh, yeah, like Bondi said, it's just like a joke that doesn't get old. You can just keep t- <laughs> telling that punchline and it keeps getting funnier, you know. Um, do you know what you're playing for us later today? What are you doing in, in the set? Uh, how many do you want us to play? I think it's three, isn't it? Is okay. that right? We'll yeah. Seven we'll play yeah. after the new one. Cocoon off the old one. Yeah. And then a wild card. I don't know. What do you want to do for the third one? Mm. <laughs> business? Yeah, we could do business. Will you talk about seven first then? Yeah. Tell us a little bit. I, I mean, we've been playing it on... a. Uh, on on the station and I, I said actually last week when we had a vinyl we played soundcheck in in its album version which is just it's a massive sounding record thank you um tell me about a little bit about seven and about the kind of formation of that that song and how it came together and and, and what it's about really um seven was the first one that was actually written for the whole uh second album so i guess that was the blueprint of kind of like the other 10 are gonna <coughs> kind of come off this and um it's the, did you meet Larry then when we come yeah. in our guitar tech yeah. he's, he's like been my best mate since we're in school together and <laughs> we just moved in together in a little place and uh, the first thing I said to him was Larry called a load of smoking when we moved in so the first line of the album <laughs> was the first thing I said to him when we moved in and you were saying that I don't know if any albums open with the word Larry I'm yet to find one or hear one it's brilliant so like like, one like first there yeah so that, what we were saying before with all that stuff with, like, with, it, with it doing well in the charts and all that kind of thing it was very it's mad for us because we're clearly not writing those songs I'm clearly writing about my best mate who's in but there that's why they you know were, that's why people relate to them that's why you're connecting with people because you're telling a story yeah in the same way that you know I think about we're, we played Arctic Monkeys earlier on today and Alex yeah. Turner I remember when that first album came out and you were like man he's just creating this you can see the story that yeah, he's yeah. telling yeah. well I heard that one not so long ago that red light indicates doors are secured and I'd not heard that in a while and it's just a song about running on a taxi in it and it's like he's made that three and a half minutes of Mike Skinner was always great at it from yeah. the streets. I love the streets, and yeah. he's the reason I got into lyrics. So, oh, oh really? To like glorifying like everyday things, which yeah. Mike Skinner does so well, isn't it? It was like, and I, I read that this bit in his book where he said like it was never about, say, if he was kind of b- breaking up with somebody, it was never about the breakup. It was about the three minute feeling you have when you do it. So he just he kind of expand on that feeling, and he was always good at kind of capturing moments as opposed to like telling a. You could tell a big story off one tiny thing. Yeah. Like Alex Turner could do well. But uh Great yeah, I love references all that kind of there. Stuff. Great Thank references you. of storytellers sort of thing. <laughs> Thank you. What <laughs> why does it start with you guys? Is it is it is it a lyric first? Is it a melody first? Or what uh, or does it depend on, on the song? In terms of like like I was saying before about I'm not much of a guitar player, I'm just like I'm handy in the kitchen at like two in the morning. Do you know what I mean? When we've all come in from You're a the night chef out. of the band. All right, okay. <laughs> not, no, not like not like cooking. Just <laughs> come in with the guitar at like two yeah. in the morning. I've got a few chords, and then you, I always kind of base songwriting on like if you can. Once you come in and off a night out, if you can make a kitchen sing with it, then it's you yeah, know, you've got something. It's a good test. And uh, it's I kind of just get the the rough chords of it, and I have the whole kind of melody idea, like lyrics, the song, and the stories there, but. I see it as like I draw a picture and the lads come in and paint it, make it as big as it can possibly be. So the the size and the sound definitely comes from the three lads and then I just have the the words and the the basic the bit I do, I guess. Yeah. You're gonna My play something off the first album for us as well. What, yeah. what are you gonna play? Uh Cocoon mm, and you said cocoon. business there as well. I'm gonna do business. Yeah. What one do you wanna do first? Um Cocoon. Cocoon. Yeah. <laughs> How really does cocoon. it feel playing those those track? You know the, the tracks from the first album now. When because you know you've progressed as a band as well, not just in terms of your experience and and how you write and what you write about and stuff. But is it is it still nice kind of going back to to playing those tracks and it reminding you of where you were then? I guess. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think because as like like you said before, the festivals are getting bigger this summer and things like that. And as everything else grows, it seems to give them songs a new lease of life. Because you've never seen them perform to that many people before, yeah. so it's kind of impossible to get to ever get bored of them. And then, yeah. I guess just through naturally recording an album, you become 
a slightly different band in terms of your sounds and things like that and it's like you learned a bit of that to the first album track so yeah it's still a long long way away from getting bored of playing <laughs> any of them really yeah definitely but it's like when we when you record when we record them we kind of it's more like just don't know kind of put them down get them down kind of work with the producer on it yeah. but when we play live it's just very much just different life isn't it yeah it's just that all the songs kind of merge into one big song to me like it's i, I kind of just see the set list in front of me and just i don't even think what's old what's new i just think this is gonna be it's a, it's like a workout when i'm watching it because just <laughs> I, I like i come off like drop the stone like i can see the crowd are just sweating like mad and i just like being in the gym or something for me on them what them thingies that they do treadmills you know the bike ones what they call oh, spinning yeah and they've got like you music done on one 45 them? minutes you just got to go with the you done one we did no. i did do it once have like, you i did it's bob got bob got me to do it once in the hotel our drummer and like <laughs> so i didn't think it would be that spinning it's mental it? isn't it it is crazy. I did one in LA once, a soul cycle thing that they've got in LA. <laughs> and it's like a it's a dark room with like disco lights flashing. Yeah, it's And they have it? like this kind of instructor who's kinda of like, Come on, believe in yourself, you can do it, push it that extra mile and you're like that to kinda of like Rihanna and you're like, Oh my god, let me stop. It's a bit weird, isn't it? I think they're yeah. just cycling they're like pretty mad. much just a good metaphor for exercise and myself in general like <laughs> kind of try but get absolutely nowhere with it <laughs> it's funny i was hearing that someone was i had a, an interview with chris martin actually and he said that you know they're playing these enormous shows at the minute on this world tour to like eighty thousand people a night or whatever it's Nuts. it's bonkers but i mean to come down from that after that you know euphoria he spends 45 minutes on a on a bike oh really yeah just to kind of almost just a like, bike though just cycle I think around just, or a spinning bike I think it's, it's not a, maybe not a spinning bike but like an exercise bike just to kind of oh, in the dress help rooms. himself kind of like just kind of oh, really? get back down to earth sort of thing we pretty much come in listen to something like Frank Sinatra and just starfish the floor for yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh I have a brilliant image in my head now for that totally yeah, turn the lights off and just <laughs> Um, the rest of the year looks so exciting for you. I mean, you're off to um, the States pretty soon for the for a huge tour. Yeah, Go 45 dates, I think it is. Wow. Have you got a great response out there so far and stuff? You're talking about playing the Governor's Ball. And yeah, it's just, it's... I, 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 I do love playing out there. It's, yeah, there's a huge sort of just positive feeling from it. Like, they really yeah. want the band... Great. to succeed it, it, it's lovely being over there yeah, and, and, you're, and you're putting the work in you know you can't just go out there and do that kind of east coast west coast thing you've got to go do the whole yeah play everywhere it's such a huge we went we actually went back and played because we talked about Nashville before yeah. we went back and played a load of because we, we we think it's important to kind of have the story piece up together and back in the in the UK people had seen us play those tiny bars or get all the way to kind of the capacities right now but in America they'd not seen that so we went back and played like 100 caps and nice. 150 cap in like New York and a load of diff small places before the tour so that people kind of had that story yeah. of like oh I've seen them in this place and then this place yeah. and this place so um, yeah I think like it's it's kind of like where it was here but two years ago so it's, it's good to know for us that if we keep working like we worked here yeah um then in two years time it could be where it is here or like on running parallel so it's good and it gets to the the band changes up a bit because me and bondy go and play acoustic out there sometimes yeah. play those small venues again like we were like 17 bumping into each other on stage and stuff <laughs> so nice. yeah like it's all good it's just um it, when we get there it's just kind of like we've got no right to be selling this place out oh. in new york what's going on so like you've got to put the shift into if you want to retain those big you know venues out there and yeah and like then back here to do Wembley. Yeah. Wow! I know, it's, it's not right doing that. Crazy. Um, listen, thank you so much for coming in thank and you. for playing for us as well. It's a, it's a real pleasure to get to, to chat to you. And, and, uh, thank you. And yeah, and, you know, it's been a great response to, to the new album so far as well. And good luck with the States as well. Thanks. Thank you. No Cheers. problem. Cheers.